Are you tired of playing small and ready to step confidently into your greatness and share your unique brilliance with the world? Well, you're in the right place. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and I've dedicated nearly two decades to empowering individuals and leaders as they confidently navigate the twists and turns of life and career transitions. If you're seeking direction, connection, or just a little push to play bigger, consider this podcast your VIP pass to a community that genuinely understands your journey. Join me every week for candid conversations and practical guidance designed to help you navigate the challenges of life and business, foster a growth mindset, and cultivate meaningful connections. It's time to embrace your inherent power, define your unique purpose, and prosper in every aspect of your life. Let's get started. Hey there, and happy Wednesday. So excited to be back with you this week. I am Sabine Gideon, the host of this podcast, Power, Purpose, and Prosperity. If you are completely new to me, welcome. Those of you who are returning, welcome back. Excited to have you here. Uh, So for those who are new, I offer support to high-achieving women in the form of coaching, mentorship, training, and community so that they can continue to excel and lead in every area of their lives. That includes mind, body, heart, spirit, wallet, relationships, and legacy. So I am so grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with me. And of course, I look forward to engaging with you as part of the larger community at some point. With that, as I've mentioned before in the last few episodes, I'm starting things off on a gratitude note. So hopefully for those of you who have been tuning in uh, for the last few episodes since episode 101, you have either been incorporating gratitude, some type of gratitude practice in your day-to-day routine, or even just as you're listening to each episode, you are identifying the thing that you are grateful for. So with that, I will share what it is that I'm grateful for this week. And while I'm sharing, again, I invite you to think of something that you are grateful for, either something that happened today, something that happened earlier in the week, earlier in the month, And if you are in a place, feel free to write write it down. But of course, if you're driving or you're cooking or you're doing something else, I totally understand. You can think about it mentally. And if for any reason, as I'm going through this, nothing pops up, that's completely fine. I just, you know, invite you to consider making it a priority to think about it before you go to bed tonight. And, you know, as I've mentioned before, there's a reason why I have I've read enough books. I've experienced it myself that there is power in expressing gratitude. And I truly am a firm believer now that gratitude opens the doors to miracles. And I want you to be able to experience as many miracles, whatever that looks like for you in your life as possible. So that's why we're starting things off on a gratitude note. And, you know, again, feel free to write it down, you know, just think about it, whatever that looks like for you when you have a moment. So my gratitude note for this week is I just held the last uh, Cultivating Connections Masterclass for the year. So for those who missed it in January, I did an encore And, you know, again, had a wonderful time. I love teaching this. I love making networking less uh, sleazy, less difficult, less painful, less whatever you want to add there for people. So that was a great time to be able to present that to those who showed up. Um, So hopefully in that time, you found something that you are grateful for. And of course, I'm always grateful every single week that you choose to download, save, subscribe, share, whatever it is that you're doing uh, of the show and, you know, the feedback that you give. And hopefully it's, it's helping, it's supporting you in your growth. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and dig in here. So today's focus I'm I'm not going to go into details about the recaps, uh, but as you know, if you've been listening the last couple of weeks, if you haven't, feel free to go back to episode 101. That's when we started this particular series and you can catch up. So, so far we talked about ecosystems, right? Identifying what are the core ecosystems, who are the people that you know within those ecosystems. We also talked about your value assessment or completing a value assessment, That is both a self-assessment and then kind of a mini 360 of the people who know you and love you most. Hopefully you've been able to do that. 
Today, we're going to create our, what I like to call the connectors inventory list. And then one more thing we did talk about starting off uh, is the connectors mindset. Going back to the, the ecosystems that I detailed, ideally at this stage or at this step, once you've identified, you know, the list of people that you know, you will go through and um, separate them out into which ecosystem they fall into. So again, you can do that on a spreadsheet. I wouldn't recommend pen and paper, especially since I told you to, to think through like about a hundred or so. But ideally, you know, once you have a spreadsheet created or if you want to get fancy with it and get a, if you have a CRM system, you can set it up there. Once you've gotten your list of names, you are then going to identify which ecosystem they fall into. And so as a quick recap, the ecosystems are friends and family, career and profession, passions and interests, so your hobbies or anything like that, finance, anything that deals with or exchanges money, community, politics. And so now that you have your list of people that you know, you've put them into the categories in which they fall in terms of ecosystems. The next step is to make sure that you have their contact information. Obviously, if you're going to be reaching out to them, you want to know that you can connect with them. So that could look like, you know, you have, you still have emails uh, from individuals or you've identified, or you have their emails, you have their phone numbers um, at the very least having their LinkedIn uh, URL saved or access to their LinkedIn URL. It's fine if you have availability to them on other platforms like Instagram or anything like that. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to LinkedIn, but especially for, you know, if you've identified someone who you used to work with, maybe it was a past manager or past peer or past mentor, and they've changed jobs, right? So you may have an old email that is no longer active. That's why I always say, make sure that you find them on LinkedIn, connect with them on LinkedIn. And I went into that in detail of how to re-engage in one prior episode, I believe that was episode 98. I will double check and make sure that that is included in the show notes. So be sure to check there. So, you know, you'll have uh, you'll have scripts, if you will, that you can make your own that you can either use or or not. But anyways, so now when you're looking at your connections inventory, you're making sure that you have identified which uh, ecosystem that they're in. You have their contact information. You know where they're located, what company they're working at right now, if it's, you know, if it's a professional one. And then the next piece that you're going to do is you're going to rank the relationship and the level of importance. And so, you know, think of a scale between one to five. And the reason why you're ranking it uh, from the level of importance, it doesn't mean that these people are important. Think about one being, you know, at, like personal, like someone who is really, really close to you. So if you have your hubby or you have your sister or, you know, someone like that, likely they would be a one. But maybe if it was, you know, the VP of your department, that you engaged with every now and then, then that person might be a four or five. Or maybe it's a client that you've had that you have not touched base with or connected with in a long time or a former coach that you haven't uh, engaged with and that person would be you know, somewhere within the three, four or five. So you'll go through and you will rank each, uh, each relationship based on is this a personal relationship or is this more of an associate or an acquaintance? And, you know, every time we go to a conference or a networking event, you exchange cards, depending on, you know, how much you've, you've kept in touch with that person or not, you know, someone that you connected with and you really wanted to engage with, but maybe you haven't had the time, they could be in one of your ecosystems. And maybe that's someone that you identify as a four of a four or a five, because you want to be proactive in, in reaching out and building that relationship. So once you've identified your people, I don't, I can't remember how many I told you to do a couple of weeks ago, but I would say aim for 200, aim for a minimum 200. And we all know 200 people easily. And so once you've identified that, you've put them in the bucket of the ecosystem that they fall into, you rank them between one to five, one being personal, five being your, you know, your associates, your acquaintances. Then you're going to identify for those who fall in that one, which are the real personal. And I would say for the purpose of this, let's exclude anyone in your household. 
So if that's hubby, if that's the kids that you had on that list, that's fine. They can stay on the list, but they're not going to go into this next step. So now that everybody's been categorized in whatever system or Excel spreadsheet or Google sheet you've created, we are then now going to break it down even further. So I'm going to introduce or walk you through or talk you through what the success circles are. And so you've heard me say this a bunch of times, and I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say it, but you know, that old statement of the five people that you spend the most time with, or you're the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. So we're going to start there. So those number ones that are outside of your household, we call that, or I call that your fab five, your for your fabulous five, right? So these are the people that you engage with probably on a daily or more, more than likely on a weekly basis. You're going to identify five people that go into your fab five. These are your personal confidants. These are the people that, you know, you trust to see you ugly cry. Um, again, outside of your household, Th those are going to be the people that you put into your fab five. Your next circle is going to be your core 50. Your core 50, consider them like you're the center of influence, if you will, of like your larger board. So these are people that you engage with, that you're close with. You know, maybe, you know, you go to brunch with every now and then, you know, you're connected with them. Obviously, in this case, I would say you should at least have their email. And these are people that you engage with on a regular basis. Or if it's someone you used to really be close to, that perhaps just because life happened and you're no longer as close to them, but you'd like to have them, them in part of that circle of influence, then you would put them in that core 50. So that's going through that list of 200, ideally, that you would have created, identifying the people who fall into that two and three category. And those are the individuals that you would identify as part of your core 50. And then the next circle is your essential 100. So this is going to be your most diverse group. This is probably going to be people that, you know, you may or may not have spoken to in a while, which is completely fine. This is going to be the most fluid circle in the sense that people are going to cycle in and out of this one. And people are may cycle in out of the core 50 or the fab five as well, but you'll see a lot more attrition, so to speak in the core 100, just because, you know, things shift. And especially when you're just starting this process, you'll find that some people, you know, they don't respond, or maybe they're not interested in reconnecting, or they've shifted gears in what they're doing. And it's no longer related to anything that, you know, you could support them with, or that they could support you with. So I'll go over that again, your circles, your first circle is your fab five. So the five people who are closest to you, your business besties, your, you know, your crew, whoever that is, they go in there. Your core 50, that's like your circle of influence. Those are the people that you engage with the most. Uh, personally, professionally, remember, we're, they're spread out through all six ecosystems. And then the essential 100 is the more broader um, broader group of people that you know and that you engage with or you desire to engage with. So that'll bring you to about 155 people that you will essentially narrow down your list. If you started at 200, great. If you started at more, even better, but you will narrow this down to 155. And you know, now you're probably wondering, okay, 155 people, what am I going to do with these? Glad you asked. So the first group, the Fab Five, again, I assume you're engaging with these people on a regular basis. So more than likely, you are already have a cadence in which you either talk to them every day or you talk to them every week. Cool. That's easy. This is probably phone numbers have been exchanged. Uh, I would think at minimum phone numbers are exchanged. Then you look at your core 50. These are people that ideally you have their email, you can easily access them on LinkedIn or whatever social platform you use. These individuals, uh, the target will be to connect with them at least once a month. And so, you know, you think 30 days, 50 people, you, if you want to schedule like one day out of the week where you do your outreaches of, hey, how's it going? What's new? Catching up, whatever that looks like for you that's fine. Or you can spread it out where it's just like, 
you know, every couple of days you're reaching out to people. I personally need to set aside time to do this. And so my, the last week of every month is my networking week. And that looks like me doing my outreaches. That looks like me doing follow-ups. That looks like me doing virtual coffees or in a couple of instances, maybe in-person coffees. But I try to structure it where it's not something that I feel like I have to do, or I have to stop what I'm doing, or I have to pe- leave people on pause for long periods of time. So for this, this, this core 50, as well as the essential 100, that's when I usually do all my outreaches. Now, again, because people, people are busy, they're doing things, responses come in throughout the month, which is fine. I get to connect with them throughout the month. So it's not like in one week I'm trying to get to, or I'm trying to touch 150 people. It's more of within that time frame, depending on where they are in the cycle and, and the cadence there, then I have that week to engage and, and do the outreaches and do some of the follow-ups with that. So you do what works best for you based on your schedule, based on your capacity. These are just recommendations. And so your core 50, you're touching base once a month. And then your essential 100, I say ideally every 90 days. And there are tools that you can use. I use Streak, and I think I've shared this in a podcast before. It is a Google Chrome extension. It is free, S-T-R-E-A-K. You can look that up. And what it does is it connects to, if you if you use Google, I use Google Workspaces. So it will, if you identify, let's just say, you know, today I'm reaching out to Melissa Brown and I can put in there, okay, Melissa Brown is one of my essential 100s. So I want to touch base with Melissa Brown in 90 days. What the system is going to do or what the tool is going to do is not only market that I have a follow-up in 90 days, but I will, it'll add it to my calendar. So I can go into my calendar and I will see, you know, in 90 days from today that I need to follow up with Melissa Brown. It's going to send me an email on the day of, and I think it sends me an email every single day until I check it off that I've already connected with Melissa Brown. So for those who need accountability uh, so that they can stay consistent, this is a great tool. I obviously have my regular CRM um, for business purposes, but I don't use the CRM for this particular case because this is this is b- relationship building. So I choose to make it manual so that it's still humanized. As I shared before, if I'm doing a like larger email mailing about an event like the the master classes that I'm doing, I'll use my my regular system for that. But if it's just more of the touch basis so that I can follow up with people as they respond, I just use my regular email account and I leverage the tool streak to support me in doing that. So to recap, you're going to create a list of at least 200 people that you know. You're going to identify which ecosystem they fall in, or it might be easier for you to look at the six ecosystems and then make a list of the people that you know there. Uh, Once you've done that, you will then rank the individual based on their level of importance, or maybe I should say level of closeness to you. So one is, you know, a very personal relationship and five is someone, you know, they're more of an associate or an acquaintance, or maybe someone you want to build a relationship with. Once you've done your rankings, you will then go in and identify your three core success circles. So your first one is your fabulous five. Those are the people who are closest to you. Those are the people who you have their number and you talk to them either on a daily or weekly basis as it is, or maybe you want to. The next uh, circle is gonna be your core 50. This is your circle of influence. These are individuals that might be in your industry, people that you've worked with in the past, like you know these people. So either you have their email or at the very least, you have access to them on a social platform, ideally LinkedIn. And then the next circle is your essential 100. So that is the broader, more diverse, maybe people that you haven't touched base with in a long time, maybe individuals that you follow, um, you know, call them influencers or whatever, and you want to build a relationship with them. So once you have your 155, your list of 155, and you've identified which circle they fall in, 
then you create a process, you create your own internal process, whatever that looks like for you and cadence of how often you're going to reach out to them. So your core 50, my recommendation is at least once a month. And again, it doesn't have to be like you're meeting with everybody once a month. It could just be an email. It could just be a message on LinkedIn. Hey, thinking about you, it can be a text message, whatever that looks like for you. And then the essential 100, I say about a quarter, uh, once a quarter, you want to touch base in some capacity. And I, I can't say this enough. You want to use some type of tool to notify you or to create that process so that you don't have to, you know, you're not always thinking about one of these lists that you just make it easier for yourself and you don't, you don't have another reason to talk yourself out of reaching out to people. So that is the, that is the bulk of it. I mean, you're going to do the bulk of the work once you identify which ecosystem they fall into. But once you have this, this process going, it makes it easier. So, you know, let's just say for the very first time you reach out to your essential 100 and maybe only 30 people respond to you or they engage with you. Cool. That's fine. You can choose, okay, of the 70, who do I really want to follow up with? Maybe in 90 days you follow up with them. Or if obviously, if you're not getting a response after that, then maybe that person comes off the list. Um, and then also, especially if you're going to events, if you're engaging, if you're networking naturally, there might be people that you're like, huh, I definitely want to add this person to, to my list. And so you can, you know, you can play around. I, like I said, the essential 100 is going to be the most fluid. And then you might find that people move from the essential 100 down into the core 50. Uh, that's certainly happened to me. Um, so that's what I have for you today. And then the last thing that I just want to share with regards to She Leads Network, those doors are closing. Um, I have decided to, to close the doors. And when I say close the doors, I mean enrollment. We're, we're not going anywhere. We're, we're riding this out. But the enrollment doors are closing soon. And I have, once they're closed, I won't be opening them back until November. So if you have been on the fence, if you have questions, whatever whatever is going on, feel free to reach out to me. I'd rather you reach out to me, ask questions. Um, if there's something on the website that is not clear, support at sabinegideon.com. I monitor that mailbox and will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Hop on board, get some support, build your network, build your relationships. And you know who knows, you, you're more than likely be adding some individuals to your core 50 from this group. So with that, I will leave you. Have a wonderful rest of the week and we will talk soon. Take care. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you found today's conversation helpful or got a piece of insight that you plan to implement in your life, I'd love to hear from you. Connect with me on LinkedIn at Sabine Gideon and send me a message or feel free to leave a review on either Apple or Spotify. I also invite you to share this episode with anyone in your network, another powerhouse possibly, who you think might benefit from today's conversation. Lastly, as always, any links, any resources, or any upcoming training is included in the show notes. So be sure to check that before you leave today. Until we chat again, have a blessed and powerful week.